Hey everybody, it's Compel. Thank you for watching this video, which is what part, what, 11 or part 11, I think, of this uh, 3D, 3D Studio Max series for beginners. Okay, so anyways, I'm pretty much finished showing you guys the the creating and modeling portion of Max. Uh, remember, this is for beginners, and uh, yeah. So before I finish off doing these kinds of things, I want to show you a few other basic things that you should know that I should have taught you before that I didn't. Um, maybe if since you've been practicing, these things will help you out a lot more. Um, yeah, these are actually really, really important things that that are really essential. And I want to go over these things before I move on to the next part of 3ds Max, which is actually the material editor. Uh, start slapping on materials and uh, making your things look like stuff. Sort of giving it color for real and stuff and and all the exciting stuff about uh, coloring and anyway. So anyways, let's go ahead and dive in. Um, yeah, this is the basic stuff again that you should be using uh, that I should have taught you a while ago, but you know, I'm unorganized like that. And well, let's just get on with it. Okay, so I'm gonna make a few objects here. Um, sphere, 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 great. That's pretty cool, you know. Um, let's press H, which you've never seen before. Let's press H. Okay, I'm gonna deselect everything, H. Sphere 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Everything that you have in the viewport, uh, let me make a box for you to uh, get the idea, or just make a bunch of stuff. Okay. Um, I don't know. Box. Okay. H. This is the way you can select things another way. Okay. If something isn't easily selectable, you can actually press H and look at what you're doing here. But there's a problem, okay? What I've done here is I've made a bunch of freaking spheres, but I don't know which one's which. Let's say I want to select this one. Well, is it that one? I, I, I can't even tell if I double click it. No, it's not. It's that one right there. Snap. I mean, of course, it's easy just to select this one. I can click it or highlight it or something, but what should I have done? What I should have done is named these, these spheres or so, okay? So let me go ahead and delete all this stuff so we don't get lost. Now this sphere, let's pretend this is uh, something else, not a sphere, okay? Let's say this is our favorite food, or just a food. This is, I don't know. I'm just gonna name this pizza, just because pizza sounds good right now, okay? And let's make another sphere, and I'm gonna name this one Hot Wings, because I love Hot Wings, okay? Or Buffalo Wings, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, let's make this one here, and I'll make this one uh, ice cream. Okay, let's just say that those are the names of our objects. That's how you name an object. All you do, you see how simple that was? I just created the object, came over here to name and color, and typed it in. Now, if we press H, there we go. Now we have our pizza, hot wings, and ice cream. Now, of course, these wouldn't be spheres. They would it'd be in shape of a pizza, and this would be a hot wing, and this would be ice cream, okay? And it would be a lot easier for me to identify what's what. And if I click double-click pizza, there we go. I have pizza selected, and I know, I know what's what. Naming objects is super, super important. Okay, now let's say we have our object selected and we go to our modify panel. You can also name things through here. Okay, so let's say for some reason uh, this isn't showing up, like it's not showing up. Go to the modify panel and you can, um, dude, really? Okay, and you can name it there. Okay, and if you click it, you can see dude, really, it's right there. Okay, I like hot wings, so I'm going to change it back because I'm really craving hot wings right now. Um, so there you go. And also, like I said, if everything's deselected, wireframes keep you super organized, okay? Something you can do, however, is, let me see, where was it at? Okay, yeah, you want to assign your wireframe color, okay? You just, you know, highlight it, go back over here, and you can select your color, okay? Let's say I want it uh, hot pink again, so I can tell which one's which. Great. Every time I make a new object, however, you'll notice that it's a different, the wireframe is a different color every time, right? It's like a random color. How do I make it one color? Well, let's go and check this out. Let me go to sphere and I'll select this and look at this, assign random colors is on. I can take that off, click okay, and every time I make one, they will be the same color. Of course, it's probably better unless you're working on something, I don't know why you'd use the same color for everything, that would be super confusing. So let's say I'm, I'm doing this and there's a bunch of different objects there. Look how crazy that is. Oh, I want to select uh, this one. Okay, great. You know, it, it's it's a lot better if you have you know your random colors going on. But 
hey, some people actually like to uh, work like that. I don't know. So you see, I can see which one's which, where each sphere kind of ends and whatnot. I sort of. That was a bad example, but uh, <laughs> but you get what I mean. Okay, you can assign those colors, and the big point is kind of made. The Z. I like to center up. I have CDO, remember? Which is uh, OCD. Just uh, in alphabetical order. Anyway, um, yeah, so that right there is, is that. Um, something else I want to show you is the different selection methods. Let's go over to sphere or let's make a box okay great um cool we'll just rip this sucker up rip that sucker up rip that sucker up all right i'm gonna right click and make this a editable mesh and i'm gonna go to vertices points and okay what if i want a circle selection of uh vertices i'm gonna have to okay control click control click control click that's that's horrible okay we don't want to do that so what we want to do is come up here and we can actually hold this down and look at this we have different selection types we have a square which we've been doing a rectangle which we've been doing we have a circle which we can go like that you know which is our circle selection which is perfect and we have a fence selection which is kind of like drawing out our line except you can't do the whole curve thing okay that's pretty cool uh, we can even do this right here which is like our uh, what is that our lasso okay we can even do like a spray paint can kind of a thing and just start spraying over things. Okay. Actually, let me, uh, let me change this to smooth and highlight so you can see this better. See that? Cool. So just so you know, those things are there. I like to, I, I use a lot of rectangle. And if anything, if I'm not using that, I'll either use the circle or the uh, spray can. Circle really comes in handy a lot. Um, what else should you know? Uh, let's go over to polygon. And I'm gonna press. I'm gonna go over perspective view, J. I'll bring this back to wireframe. Okay. Let's say I want a more precise kind of a selection. Okay. If I rectangle select that, I mean that's great. You know, um, what I can do is even you know rectangle just inside this little square right there. Oops. If I rectangle, let's say, down like that, it's going to select all those. Let's say I want to get all of these in the middle right here without selecting these outside ones. I want to get more of a precise selection. You know, I can easily go like that, yeah. But let's enable this option right here, window and crossing, okay? This means, let's say I select down like that, nothing will select, because check that out. What I have to do is I have to select the whole polygon, okay? So look at that. I have to select whatever is actually in the window. See see that window? That middle polygon will get selected. Um, now, if I did the same thing with that off, all those will get selected. See that? So, mess around with that. I mean, you can get a whole column of things like that. Okay? Pretty cool. Now, check out what I've done. Let me, let me take this off. Go back to rectangular selection. And this is very important as well, especially when modeling. Especially when modeling. Let me make this rectangle selection, and cool, you know, oh, I'm editing, and I'm doing my thing, and, you know, I'm bringing this up, and oh, that looks so cool. What if I go to the bottom? Look what I've done. I've just messed up the, the bottom part. Let me undo that. If you, if you see here, let me take off J. Um, if you see here, I've selected both sides. That is huge, huge, huge problem. Uh, if you can't get back to your selection tool, you can come over here, select object, that thing right there. Okay, cool. That's a huge problem. We're selecting both sides. How the heck do I get rid of that? Well, it's actually really simple. Let's bring this bar up here, and let's ignore the back facing. And now if I select that, now look, the bottom's left alone. It only selects what I actually see. So that's a huge, huge deal. Um, that's a huge deal. Okay. So, uh, yeah, just know that, because pretty important ignore back facing I use every single time I open up max except for the tutorial series obviously but every project that I'm working on I always have that ignore back facing on or off depending on what I need so yeah that's what's going on there let me bring this back to kind of what it looked like before okay um let me see what else do I need to show you snap tools I've showed you that um, snap can be super important especially when you need a snap to a grid 
or let's say you're modeling on this object here okay and you're on edges you know you know you're on vertex points um, if I right click this take off grid points and go to vertex I'm now snapping to these vertex points okay so I mean if you need like super precise modeling or something there you go you can snap to anything in here if you right click this anything in here okay or midpoint as well as you can see it was snapping to midpoints um, yeah so there you go it's your snap stuff um, S turn that on and off a or right here angle snap a okay angle snap pretty much means that you can uh, if we rotate let me go back to editable mesh so I can edit this whole thing here uh, if I'm like in polygon I can't edit this whole square I'm gonna be editing one single polygon let's go back to editable mesh now I can edit this okay if I rotate this without angle snap on look at the degrees See right there you can either look at those yellow letters right here or down here um, we're not getting very precise numbers I'm getting uh, 3.84 10.75 uh, 25.57 um, I mean that's pretty cool that's a nice flexibility but what if we need something like 90 degrees what we can actually do is I mean we can go 90 enter and do that you know but that's not what I want what I want to do is turn on angle snap and now when I rotate it look at that nice like five degree in increments it snaps to 10 15 25 and boom we get to 90 super quick rather than having to deal with um, I think it's about right somewhere around right oh, it's 0.4 you know you just want angle snap and that'll work super quick for you great um, so that's angle snap those are the snap options that you have which are really really great um, let me reset this I'm not liking the way this is looking uh, okay so it's angle snap um, okay something else in the selection tool let me go to that let me just make a plane okay and F4, I'm just going to rip this a little bit, you know. Okay. Um, what did I want to show you? Okay, yeah. I have a, a geometric object, right? Piece of geometry. I'm also going to make a line. Right click. I'm going to make a circle. Okay, cool. And, uh, alright. If I select all these, they will all select, right? What if you want to filter out your selection? This way you can only select... Sorry, this video is turning out long, but really essential stuff that you might need to know that you need to know. What if you just want to select, let's say, the geometry and not these, not have to worry about selecting these shapes? Well, you can come over here and go to All and bring down Geometry. Now, you will only select Geometry. And you can now see that, that one's only that one is moving. Or let's say you only want to select Shapes. Now, these two shapes will, uh, will move not the piece of geometry okay I can't select this at all go back to all I mean you can select uh, geometry shapes lights cameras uh, whatever okay so I mean that's a, that's a pretty good thing to know um let me see I showed you naming an object I showed you the H key which uh, is everything pretty much there okay um okay I'll show you something else here let me go and actually s kind of bring up these segments by a ton. I can actually delete these shapes now because I don't need those. And I want to show you something called soft selection, which is really fun. Oh, you know, I'm gonna show you with a uh I'm gonna show you with a sphere. Let's bring a sphere out. And I mean this is another way of modeling, I guess you could say. Um F4, J, get rid of that thing there. And I can bring the segments up. Usually when you do this thing called soft selection, uh you want a bunch of segments or else it won't look smooth. Great. I'm going to press G actually to get rid of that. I'm going to right click and I'm actually going to go to convert to editable mesh. And let's go down to the vertices points. Yeah, we can select these vertices points and we can move them one by one. Or we can select a group of them. You know, but look how blocky that looks. It doesn't look very good. Uh, what we can do is actually scroll down some and go down here, soft selection, and open that up. Let's open that up. And we're going to go ahead and use soft selection. And let's select a vertice point. Boom. Now, if I turn it off, look at that. See what it looks like on and off, on and off, on. Look at this. Now, if I move this, it's going to affect a whole mess of vertices points. Uh, and it's going to have a different weight to it. Okay, If it's like in red, that means it's going to select it and move it ra like 
like largely if, if it's in the blue area it's gonna move it but not as much now we can actually change that area by changing the fall off look at that we can change it to a huge part of the sphere and we can actually start modeling like this if we want to see that so we can totally alter the way that this sphere looks and this right here is actually really fun to do so I mean check that out that no longer looks like a sphere Okay, so it's really fun, really cool. You can make some pretty cool objects out of that. Uh, change the fall off even more, and it will pretty much, you know, move the whole thing. That's cool. Uh, see, so we can see what we're doing right here. See that? Change the fall off and whatnot. Uh, let's go actually and reset. And I'm going to show you with a plane what that looks like. Okay, and I'm going to make a bunch of segments. F4, oops, and J. Okay, bunch of segments. Great. You know what? I'm gonna rip this up. You might not want to put it up this high. I don't know what your computer can take. Uh, it should, it should be able to take 50 by 50. Okay. Anyway, I'm gonna convert this to an editable mesh and go to vertex, and you know we can move one, which is boring, or we can enable soft selection and move a big one, like a big selection, which will kind of like make a landscape or something. Okay. So now we're making like hills, if you have an imagination. And we could change the fall off. Okay, see the fall off changing? It's great. Make a bigger hill. And what we can even do is change the pinch. If you look right here, this graph, you can see the way it's being affected there. Okay, so if I change it like that, it's like two butt cheeks or something. <laughs> uh, now we made ourselves like a volcano kind of a thing. And if we change the pinch, uh, to like a like a point you'll see how that gets affected that's pretty cool right there okay um, yeah just mess around with this kind of stuff we can even bubble this up so let's put the pinch to zero fall off to 45 that's great bubble you can make it a uh, you know just sink in boom look how it sinks in like that I mean it's pretty interesting you know uh, we can even move it down I mean you don't have to move it up and I mean, you can keep moving it and make different effects. Anyway, let's come over here. And the bubble will actually kind of flatten it out. So I can make like a fat, flat area on the top. See that? So I mean, you can do so much with uh, the soft selection. And it's super interesting. So yeah, maybe you're interested in modeling like that. All right, so F4, great. That's what it looks like. Editable mesh, and that's what we've made right there. See how it kind of looks all blocky and choppy? If you add more uh, segments, it won't look like that. It just depends on what your computer can take, uh, really. Okay. So there you go. Um, that was just a bunch of stuff that I think that you guys should know about. Um, yeah, really. Um, you guys know so much by now, and I'm, I don't know, you guys are, should be proud of yourselves because before, I don't know, if you were a total beginner, you were probably like, wow, what, what does this button do? Uh, how do I move? How do I even, how? Like, what? This program doesn't make any sense look at you you're what like like 11 episodes in or so and you're learning a ton seriously you've learned a ton and this is actually like a 20 minute video and i'm sorry about that but uh yeah in the next video we will actually diving into the material editor and start giving things color and stuff the material editor is a whole nother beast which is actually right here um oops open up on a different screen here it's actually a whole nother beast of uh of the program and well I gotta say, it's a lot of fun as well. So, this whole program is fun. Uh, it just depends on how much time you put into it to determine your skill and your workflow and your speed into the program. So, anyways, thank you for watching. Um, please thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. Sorry this video took a while. There's just a lot to do. I was actually having fun with this uh, soft selection stuff and, well, kind of just went on and on. All links will be in the description. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Again, thumbs up, comment, and subscribe.